Have you ever thought about when you might die? The fear of the unknown has made humans long for a way to cheat death since the beginning of time. But now that we're on the brink of life-extending technology, who wants to live forever? And what will our world and afterlife look like? Digital Shaman is a project that creates 3D death masks and uploads messages for bereaved family members. Ms. Ichihara offers relatives of the deceased an opportunity to talk to their loved ones through their remaining digital footprint. Her work is linked to the Buddhist belief that rebirth will take place within 49 days. Uh, this is how I feel like. It's really hot, isn't it? Uh, do you mind if I lower the temperature setting of the air conditioner? No. Can I? Go ahead. You don't care? <laughs> no. Okay. I will. こちらがですねデジタルシャーマンプロジェクトという作品なんですけどまだ亡くなる前の,あの方の,あの顔とか声とか仕草、まああの要は体のデータをあの生前に取れるだけ取っておいてでその方があの亡くなってしまってから、まあ、その体のデータをロボットにあの全部バーンって入れて。But you didn't expect to see the person here, right? でその人が亡くなってしまってからあの死後四十九日間だけその人の代わりにあの振る舞ってくれてちょっとあの技術的にお話とかができてでも永遠にいてくれるわけじゃなくって最後はあーって<笑>あの、まあ、成仏していってしまってであのアプリケーションは終了してあのロボットはもう元に戻ってしまう。I hate to say it's been 49 days. That means... このロボットを通して亡くなられた方の本質を実際に完璧に再現することはできると思いますか魂を再現するっていうのはすごくあの本当黒魔術みたいなものでなかなか難しいんじゃないかなとは思っていますただでもその人の似姿を再現することであのグリーフケアっていう概念があるんですけど、まあ、誰かを失ってしまって、まあ、その喪失感があるその状態を、まあ、ケアする。まあ、なんで忘れたらいけないと思っているのはこれはあくまであのハリボテというか偽物であっていつかは絶対にその亡くなった方の死は受け入れないといけないとは思っています。There is nothing different from my previous body. I can speak, I can see, I can move. 臓器提供カードってあるじゃないですか。あのあの亡くなった後は私の臓器提供しますっていうのと一緒でなんか亡くなった後に自分のデジタルデータをあの権利を解放しますとかあのあの永遠に生きさせることがを許容しますとかなんかそういう意思表示みたいなのがもしかしたらこれからあの生きて死ぬ人はもしかしたら必要になっていくかもしれないなと思いました。It was really nice to have 49 days together with you. If 49 days isn't enough time to spend with your loved ones, the development of new technology could be offering very real solutions. Professor Yoshimori from Osaka University specializes in autophagy, a naturally occurring cell recycling process that he believes can be used to extend human life. Autophagy is a natural occurring cell recycling process. 年を取るとオートファジーがだんだん働かなくなるっていうのが分かってたんですね。2年ほど前にルビコンっていうあるタンパク質、まあオートファジーが暴走しないようにコントロールするためにあるんですけど、これがなぜか年を取ると増えてしまうっていうのを見つけたんですね。で、そうするとオートファジーにブレーキがかかっちゃって、細胞の中の入れ替えがうまくいかなくなって、細胞が老化する、まあ、体も老化するっていうことが。起こってしまってで逆に言うとそのオートファジーが下がるのを止めれば寿命伸びるんじゃないかっていうふうに思ってだからルビコンの設計図である遺伝子を破壊してしまうとその生き物は
ルビコンを作れなくなる、うん、そしたらオートファジーが年を取っても下がらなくなってでその結果寿命が 1.2 倍伸びました。The team has so far been able to increase the lifespan of flies and roundworms at this ratio, but it hasn't experimented on humans yet. So, that's why I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. The method of suppressing Rubicon to increase autophagy has been tested on age related illnesses as well as cancer. In this experiment, you can see healthy flies on the left, flies with a brain disease in the middle, and flies with the same brain disease but a Rubicon suppressor to the right. The flies on the right are almost as active as the flies on the left. The flies on the right are almost as active as the flies on the left. アホウドリっているんですけどそれからゾウガメそれから裸デバネズミっていうネズミなんですけどこういった生き物は老化しないんですずっと元気なままで年取ったように見えなくってある日死ぬんですねだから人間も可能だと思います吉森さんの研究によって実際に人間の寿命を伸ばすことができると思いますかこれからそういうことを調べていかなきゃいけないですね例えばね薬ができたりあるいはサプリメントでもいいし食品の成分でもオートファジーを上げることができるものあのが見つかってるし例えば納豆のね成分がオートファジーを上げるんですまあそういうもので伸ばすことができるんじゃないかなとは思ってますけどもまだあのエビデンスはないですね人間では。吉森さんの研究はいつ商業的に利用できるようになると思いますかどうでしょうね、うん、とそういう間接的な証明はもうされてるからだから病気になりにくいかどうかは割と早くに確かめられると思いますオートファジーの場合にただ実際にどれだけ長生きさせられるかとかは人間の場合はねどうしても寿命を測んなきゃいけないからちょっと時間かかりますね死がなくなるのは人間にいいことだと思いますか私は個人的には死なないっていうのはどうかなと思うしだけどあの長生きして健康であるっていうのはあのテクノロジーを使ってもやるべきだと個人的には考えます I'm not sure if I would want to live forever, but that scenario could now be a real possibility. Professor Watanabe at the University of Tokyo is working on a device that would upload your consciousness to a computer. So, this is our、um, secret brain machine interface. Well, it's actually not a secret anymore because、um, we applied a patent from Tokyo University just last year. So, this is actually a 2D array of electrodes, and we would insert this brain machine interface on the human corpse colossum. It functions to rewire the brain wet hemisphere with the machine hemisphere. It's kind of my dream to upload the human conscious mind, but at the same time, I would like to investigate how, like,、um, Consciously actually re resides in our human brain.、Uh, as of today, I think all neuroscientists, most of them at least, assume that、um, the human consciousness resides in our human brain. So, this subjectivity is what we think is consciousness. And at this point of today,、um, we don't have a clue how it resides in the brain. With this service, can you escape death? Yes, actually, yes.、Um, If you split the two cortical hemispheres within a skull, we actually have two conscious minds. So, this is the split brain study. It was used to treat epilepsy. So, we know already that、uh, our human brain, each hemisphere has the potential to、um, hold consciousness on its own. So, this is exactly what we make use of. 
Professor Watanabe's team in Germany is in the midst of its research and has started to test this technology on animals. The aim is to connect the brain directly to a machine. I want to um, cross-connect. So the left biological hemisphere with the right machine and the right uh, biological hemisphere with the left um, machine hemisphere. So in the end, at that point, we would have like, um, you know, two sets of crossed consciousness. And when the biological side is dead, we would reconnect the machine. The second step would be to actually try to transfer memory to this machine. So let's say we have achieved that. So this machine and the brain is actually consciously uh, integrated and also uh, we have transferred sufficient amount of um, memory. So from there, what would happen is, uh, let's say uh, I have a stroke in my right cortical hemisphere. My conscious mind would just continue in this other hemisphere. So this is exactly what we want to achieve in this process, that at the point when this biological side um, is dead, um, your consciousness would seamlessly continue on the machine side. So in this way, there's no point where I actually die. So I just seamlessly be uploaded onto the machine. To integrate consciousness, it might take a week or so. To actually transfer memory, it might take months maybe. During that period, um, you would be kind of split. So we know that if uh, your consciousness is fully split, uh, you would have kind of two minds and they might conflict. So this final processing, uh, this upload process, um, I have to say it would be split. Basically this process um, is going to occur when you're terminally ill. So it's going to be last months of your life. And I think this split brain experience is worth it. it you, know, you would get potentially eternal life. If you've uploaded your consciousness to yeah. the device, yeah. how does it connect with your physical body? Would you not need a physical body? Yeah, okay. So there are two alternatives. One is to like fully live in a digital computer. So you have your digital brain, which would have your consciousness, like a cloud server system, which would be well, much more advanced in another 20 years. And you might be happy living in the virtual digital world as in the movie Matrix, you know, the first scene of Neo, like he doesn't realize that it's an artificial world. So we can actually achieve that. But uh, if you want to pop out and come back to the actual world, I think we can use the internet to connect your avatar robot body through a server, then you can pop out. When do you think this service will be available to the general public commercially? Okay, my hope to, is to commercialize in 20 years. So this final product would be actual be a, like a server system which we can upload our human conscious mind onto it. Well, I don't think it would be for everyone, but when we actually achieve, and my hope is to like try to make it quite cheap, so it's going to be like buying a used car. A lot of people would actually want to at least try it out. If they're not happy, you can pull the lever. Well, I guess, you know, taking the Matrix example, yeah. how do you know or how can we tell that we're not living the exact yeah. situation that you're imagining already? There's no way. There's no, like, a real way to tell whether this life is real or it's already virtual. The search for eternal existence has spanned generations and cultures, but it remains to be seen whether this type of digital, virtual reality will be accepted or whether humanity will decide to pull the plug.